Hi, my name is Alex with Daytech Tech, Tech Tutorials, and today we're going to be talking about the basic roadmap. That's right, the basic roadmap that's in every single Scrum and Kanban based Jira software project. We're going to be talking about it, giving you some tips, some tricks, some pointers, some methods of getting the most bang for your buck, because this is the free version. This comes with standard. You don't have to pay extra. You may have heard of the advanced roadmaps. That is a Jira premium only feature. You have to double your bill just to have access to that. We're not gonna be talking about that, but I do have two videos, two hour long trainings that I've done on advanced roadmaps. So if you're interested in that, make sure you check out the description below as you'll be able to see those two trainings down there. And finally, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this video. It really does help the channel grow as those signals tell YouTube to promote this channel to even more people. So make sure you're just dropping that like because it's free to you. Super low key, just smash that like button. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about anything that we talk about today, let me know down in the comment section below. Now, I did lie to you. I said finally earlier, but really finally, I just wanted you know I have merch, I have new shirts. And so if you want to support the channel, get one, get one of each, get one for your coworkers, get one for everyone you know. The shirts are a really fun way to show off your Jira-ism, your Agile-ism at work. And so they're fun, they're clever in my opinion. And so just get one if you want to support the channel, I appreciate you. Now let's jump into today's topic. So coming over to Jira, let me just start off by basically telling you what is the roadmap. So the roadmap is super interesting here. It comes with the free version of Jira and it comes with the standard. This is not the advanced roadmap that you get with premium, but every single board will get this. There are some limitations, but Atlassian is adding features to it. It is somewhat effective. If you don't have Jira premium, you can still use the basic roadmap and get some tremendous value out of it. And today's video, I'm gonna try to basically illustrate that value to you and hopefully convince you to use the roadmap because I've seen a lot of teams that just overlook it because it's not something that's taught in your agile trainings. In agile, you are usually taught to go straight into our backlog and then go work on our boards for our sprints. But the roadmap is like this low key, even though it's, it's limited, but it's still very effective, still very powerful. So I'm going to give you some tips, some tricks, some information, some 411, some, some knowledge, some insights into how you can stand out from the crowd knowing or having this information on how to use these basic roadmap. So the first thing that I want to tell you is the basic roadmap is going to work from the epic down. So that means that if you're creating issues, the basic roadmap is actually going to let you create epics, stories, tasks, and bugs. Nothing else. If you're a, a team that is using issue types above the epics, like an initiative or a theme, that's not going to work here. So that's limitation number one. Also, if you're using subtasks, that's also not going to work. So that's limitation number two. Limitation number three is, and this is not going to sound like a limitation at first, but at the epic level, you can set dates. So I can come in here and basically set some dates for my epics. You can see I can move these things around. But if I try to do it for the stories, for the issues below it, it's just not possible. So that is going to be limitation number three, where you can set dates for your epics, but you're not going to be able to set start and end dates for your stories. And this is for good reason. This is for a really, really good reason because you shouldn't be putting start and end dates on your stories because guess what the start and the end date is for every story naturally? You guessed it, the sprint. And if you look closely, we look closely over here, you're going to see that there's a sprint section up here. It's a dedicated row just for the sprints. I'm going to scroll over to the left a little bit. And you're going to see that the dates that you define for your sprints, they actually get nested and embedded into your roadmap. So from that perspective, it's good. It's a good thing that your stories can't have those dates because it would just clutter the things. It would clutter the narrative of the story belongs to the sprint and the sprint is defined by these dates. It would be silly to have a start and end date that is outside of the scope of the sprint because then we're not doing Agile correctly at all. So the stories, while you will not see a bar, you will still see the sprint up above and you'll know the soft dates, as, as you will, on when those stories and sto tasks and bugs should be completed. That is a limitation, but I think it's a, a good one. I think it's a helpful one because like I said, it won't just confuse the heck out of you. So next, I'll go back to creating the issues. I love creating epics and stories here because when I create a, a story in the basic roadmap, the story is created instantaneously. The epic is created instantaneously. 
But what's really cool, what you may not know what's happening under the hood is when you create the epic, the title that you type in, it gets created, but the epic name is automatically copied over. So rather than having to copy and paste your summary into your epic name, like you would normally when you go hit the create button up here and you click on epic, you see up here you have to provide an epic name and a summary because they're both required. So rather than copy pasting or trying to do whatever you do here, you just need to type in the name here. Once you type it in here in the basic roadmap, so this is my new epic, and I hit enter, it's done. Automatically, that title, that summary was set. This is my new epic. And if I scroll down here, my epic name is the same as my title. This is my new epic. So that happens instantaneously. The other cool little thing that you can do, if you click on this little plus sign on the epic itself, you will then be able to create either a bug, a task, or a story, whatever basic issue type you have to find in your Jira. So when you come over here and you type in, this is my story, and you hit enter, the relationship, the linking between the story and the epic is now created. You may remember that when you create a story using the regular create method, you actually have to come down, find your epic link field, and then select your epic. It's just extra work because now you gotta remember which epic does this story belong to? But if you go down this route, that linking will happen here automatically on your behalf. And it's just one less thing that you got to worry about for all my Hamilton fans out there. Okay. So that's another cool thing. Now, another thing that I want to show you is right below the sprints, but above all the issues that we've been creating, you have something called the releases. So when you put dates on your release, they will also show up on your roadmap here. You only get the end date. You get the due date of that release. You won't get the full bar, but you at least get an appreciation for if you're trying to pipe in your features or you're trying to make sure that certain epics are completed by a certain release, then you can visualize those a lot easier on here so that you can see and understand, oh, well, all these epics are gonna be good because they happened before the release, but now this epic here, we have a problem because it's gonna be concluded after the fact. It's gonna be concluded after we ship the release. And if that is your intention, right? If that feature doesn't belong to that release, kudos. But if it's not, if that feature or that epic is supposed to be in your release, then Houston, we have a little bit of a problem. Now you got to go negotiate and figure out how to pull that schedule to the left. So that's really all the cool stuff that you can do just at face value. Now from here, you can actually do some configuration, some settings that, that are kind of cool. So you can do your status category. So if you only want to see issues that are to do, this will move everything or hide everything that's not in this status, right? So if you just want to see everything that's done, you can click on that as well and you'll see all of the epics that are done. You can also now find by a specific epic. So if you just were interested in one epic, you can click on it here and it's just going to show you the details at that one specific epic. Same thing with versions. So if you have a couple of versions for your issues, you can click on that and it's only going to show you the issues with that fixed version equals whatever you selected. We have type over here where if you just want to see the bugs, you can now just see the epics that have bugs on them. And the same thing's going to happen here with components. So if you have an issue that has a specific component, you can click on that and it's going to hide everything but the ones that have that component. And then we have more and we have quick filter. So now basically at this point, you have whatever you want to create here. And so I don't have any specific quick filters created, but if you create quick filters, they're helpful there, but they also show up on your backlog up here. So feel free to create some quick filters as they're a very nifty way of quickly just getting through that noise, separating all that noise and just showing you what you're really interested in. So when you define those quick filters for your backlog and for your active sprints, they will also be available in here. And finally, you have a couple of settings here where you can show Epic completed in the last 12 months. You can drop that down. So if this board is getting really cluttered because you just have a lot of finished work, you can drop it down. You can only show the last month or so. You can also just hide all the completed epics whenever they're done. You can show dependencies, the progress, the releases, some warnings. The warnings are going to happen here. There's a warning that I have on this one where the issue ends before its child issues are completed. So you can hide those if you want to, or you can show them because I personally think that you should show them, but it's kind of a cool little thing there. And then really, really finally, you can export it, you can share it, and that's pretty much it. You can configure a little bit of your roadmap here but this is probably gonna be some more advanced uh, things, but there's not a whole lot that you can do other than you can do 
enable the roadmap, you can turn them off. You can actually turn this off. So that's one thing to note that I haven't addressed. But if you don't have a roadmap, you're gonna, it's going to be for two reasons. One, it's probably turned off. Or num reason number two, and this is a limitation that I have not spoken about. But if the roadmap is not working for you, if it looks something like this, this is usually the scenario you're going to get. It'll say that, uh-oh, roadmaps are designed for a single project. So this means that your filter, the board filter, is actually absorbing issues from multiple boards. And the basic roadmap cannot do that. That is the life that you live where you are managing multiple projects or, or multiple boards or multiple issues from multiple Jira projects. Then you have to go to the advanced version. And that's where you basically got to double up your price. But as long as you're a small team and your scope is fairly just restricted to just that one project, you're going to be a okay with just being in a single project in a single board with a single roadmap. And you're going to see everything that you need to know and more. So hopefully this was beneficial. Go and check it out. If you're not using your roadmap today, go check it out and then go to the comment section and let me know if you like it or not. If you're already using it, Maybe I missed a feature. Maybe you're doing something cool that I totally forgot. Let me know in the comment section below. And if you have any questions or comments or concerns, or if you want to discuss anything else, let me know in the comment section below as well. Finally, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you made it this far, because you made it this far. So the, le the least you could do is smash the subscribe button. And also, if you want to help the channel grow, smash that like button as these likes really do help provide signals, positive signals to the YouTube algorithm to promote this video to other people. And don't forget, I have a merch store. Don't forget that I have now paid courses available. So if you're interested in those, everything is in the description down below. So make sure you check it out and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. It's only worth it if you work for it. It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now.